So we're up to the official time and might as well get going. Uh, this is Threat Hunting with Spunk. You need to go to this web page. I'll put it in the chat if anybody doesn't have it. And it's structured like a capture the flag. And there's, uh, you use an online Spunk server so you don't have to install anything. So uh, I'll start with the introduction. I've got a Splunk server at splunk.samskies.info or splunk2.samskies.info. It's protected by basic authentication and a proxy service in front, student one and student one, because the thing about Splunk is the free version uh, gives everybody administrator privileges all the time, which is one of the ways they punish you for using the free version. So it doesn't have any uh, sort of, to prevent people just getting hacked too often, I put it behind a little bit of authentication. <clears throat> And the point of Splunk is to search log data. So if you go here, uh, you see there's about a million events preloaded in here. Uh, the, the workers at Splunk set up a network in Amazon uh, with some common servers used by corporations, and they sent a lot of real attacks against it. And they accumulated that data and used it in a capture the flag contest four years ago. And then there were later versions. But I like the first version more than the later versions, because the later versions start using a bunch of proprietary stuff from Splunk. And the first version teaches you the basics here. And so there's a lot of data, but if you search, you won't find anything right away because the default is to search for only the last 24 hours. You have to go to all time. And then you don't really have to do it in this data, but it's a recommended uh, good procedure to limit your index. If you have a large corporate network, you'll, have, you'll sort your data into categories and use the index to limit it. And if I search now, I'm gonna find all 1 million events approximately. So to make things faster, I'm going to slow it. I'm only going to show one event out of the, every thousand that I find and search. And so what it shows you are just log entries here. And they're all different kinds of log entries. This is Microsoft Sysmon telling you a register key was created and so on. Other things happening uh, down here. Some kind of XML thing has been detected. So reading these one by one will tend to drive you nuts. In order to understand them better, it's good to uh, first understand what the different sources are. So I'm going to go back to the main search page and look at the data summary. And this shows you a summary of all the events. And if that one is going to be, okay, there we are. Now they show you hosts, which might be most meaningful in most circumstances where this is your company and you know the names of the machines. But for us, since we don't know that, it's probably more interesting to look at the sources. And this tells you what type of device created this data. So this is Suricata, which is an intrusion detection system. So those will be detected malicious activities. These are web server logs. And here's uh, the Microsoft event logs from, win from Windows Server. Here's the Windows registry. Um, here's something like called scans. I don't really know what that is. Then there's some stream data where different protocols have been monitored by it, HTTP, IP, LDAP, and so on. And then I thought there was one more type of data, but anyway, I'll just carry on. So that's a uh, that's general idea of what these types of data mean. And so now you can try viewing uh, some different types of data. And let me go back to my instructions. Yeah, so now what I want to do is um, try looking at HTTP events. Now you can type in a name like this, source type equals stream colon HTTP, and that works. And once you get good at it, you might use the command line like that. But especially for beginners and, you know, people that just prefer to use the mouse, you don't have to. I can just put in the index. And then uh, I'll go back to my sampling and search all time again to get back to my original condition. All right, now I have some events. Now I can go to source down here. These show you interesting fields, selected fields that select all the time and then other fields that uh, have enough variation in the data to make them interesting. I think they're fields that are present in more than like 20% uh, of the events or something like that. You hit the source and it shows me the source. And one of the possible sources is stream HTTP. So if I just click on that, it will do the typing for me and limit me to HTTP data. So these are records of web transactions. 
and now I only see 31, but I'm only seeing one one thousandth of the events here. But I can still get an idea. It looks like you're trying to access MongoDB over HTTP, so somebody is uh, trying to reach a Mongo server in an inappropriate way and getting a message. All right, and so now that I've narrowed it down to an interesting category of events, I want to get rid of the sampling. Oh, one other issue is I would like to see web events, not just anywhere, but web events to my server. And I know the domain name of this server. It's I'm really not Batman.com. That's what they used as the name of their company server when they made this fake data. So these will be HTTP events going to our web server because no other HTTP event would have the name of our web server. And now I only see 28 of them. So if I get rid of the sampling, I'll see them all and there should be about 28,000 of them. <clears throat> All right, there we go, it runs, and it, it's not done until you see a check mark up here. There we go. All right, so if you look at these events, you can just read them here, and sometimes I do that. Uh, often you find what you want by looking at the field data, sometimes you find what you want looking over here. In this case, I have a pretty good idea, yep, that I will find this before long. In the source request of this HTTP request, you see these headers, Acunetrix product and so on. This is the Acunetrix vulnerability scanner, which puts this label in requests that come from it. So some criminals have been attacking our network. They've been using a copy of a commercial vulnerability scanner. And now that I have this, um, this, I, this information, I can find out a bunch of stuff. And in particular, I have the, um, IP address of the attacker from the source address of this. I have the IP address of the web server. It's the destination of this packet. I have the brand name of the scanner. And so I would like the IP address of the web server, and that's going to be this address here. And the reason I'm going to use that is because I'm going to find traffic that went backwards. In a normal network, your server should only be a server and never a client. You're not supposed to be opening a browser on the web server and going to the web and downloading things. You don't do that for two reasons. One reason is that um, you might get it infected. And the other reason is that's what criminals do. When they run malware on your server, they will typically open a reverse shell. The server will send a request to a command and control center to be controlled, and you don't allow that. You force it to take another path out of your network. Your server and servers are not allowed to connect directly to the internet at all. And we're gonna see if this network allows that. So if I go back here, these are HTTP requests. And if I look at, say, the client IP, um, let's, I only have one value. I'm going to try source IP, see if that works any better. All right, source IP. I think that's all right anyway. So I'm gonna, I've got one source IP here. Yeah, all these. All right. So I'm going to restrict to that source IP. And... I'm strangely not getting any response here. Oh, server error. Well, that's not fun. Maybe everybody using it. Let me try the other one. So it was index equal bots v1. And then um, source HTTP. All right, let me just catch up. I'll search all time with sampling and then go to source type and limit it to stream. And now find source IP. Ah, that's what I thought. I thought I should see multiple values. And now I pick one of those values. And now I'm getting HTTP requests from one source. And I'm going to paste in the value, which is the IP address of the web server. And now I'm looking for traffic that makes an HTTP request originating from the web server, which should never happen. And it doesn't happen very often. I don't see any with a sampling of one to a thousand. But if I have no event sampling, I should find a few of these events. And see, there's two, and it's still searching. It finds eight events. These are the events that went opposite to the normal, normal direction of traffic, and they're therefore very suspicious. And if you look at them, they get even more suspicious. You can see it gets an, an image called Poison Ivy is coming for you, and it goes to a goofy site with a strange domain name and a strange port number. So this is clearly malicious traffic. And anyway, that shows you the essence of how you use Splunk. And uh, 
in order to record your points, if you go back to here, there are different pages. This page is just the demonstration I just showed you, the basic techniques of using Splunk, and a couple of references at the bottom, other places you can get more clues about Splunk, and then you find the challenges here to answer. So you need the brand name of the vulnerability scanner, attacker's IP address, web server's IP address, the file name of the image that came down, and the domain name of the domain it came from. So you can get all of those from the uh, process you do in the first tutorial there, and then you just submit them up here. So this one here, for example, is um, the scanner name, bots 1.1. So you go here and go submit flags, and then you choose the right flag. That's the first one, putting your name in the flag. And when you get it, you'll end up on the scoreboard, which has nobody, but I guess it'll have some people pretty soon because the first level is all pretty easy. And if you follow this page of instructions called introduction, it'll show you how to do it. So you should be able to do that. And there's, we're here to help you. There's Caitlin and Irvin you see in the camera. I think uh, Liz is not here, so they're here to help you. Uh, we all teach these workshops all the time together. And uh, it's not intended to be baffling or difficult. Uh, so give it a try. And I'll come back and give a demonstration of the higher levels. But I'm not planning to talk for two hours here. Uh, it'll be mostly you people working. And I'll demonstrate things and I'll answer questions. You should all be able to get on the scoreboard and run some of these spunk, spunk queries. So I'm going to stop.